So in this video, we're going to be learning about React. So React is a library for creating user interfaces in JavaScript, as it says here. It was created by Facebook, and what it does is make it really easy to reuse different parts of your interfaces. Everything in React is called a component, and you can take a component and you can reuse it in different parts of your application. So this is what we're going to learn how to create today. So what we have is a simple web page that says the button was last clicked six seconds ago. If I click change, you can see the title changes and the timer underneath changes. If I click it again, you can see the timer gets reset. So to get started with React, we have to include the React libraries at the top of our page. And then we want to include something called Babel. So this is Babel here. What it allows us to do is it allows us to use the newest version of JavaScript, but Babel will convert it into the old version of JavaScript for old browsers that don't support the newest versions of JavaScript. Babel also lets us convert what's called JSX into JavaScript in our browser. JSX is the language React components are written in and it's virtually identical to JavaScript. There's just a couple of slight changes and we'll learn about those in this video. So here is a really simple project in React. So everything in React gets rendered inside of this root div. So every time you create a new page that you want to use React on, you want to create a div with the ID of root. And that's all you want on the page. React will render everything else. That's why we have our script tags underneath the root div. And for script type, we're using Babel because that lets us use JSX, which is the language that React components are written in. So the biggest difference between JSX and JavaScript is if we go down to the bottom, you can see in our JavaScript, we are returning, which looks like HTML, but you can see it's not inside a string, it's not a comment, it just looks like raw HTML. JSX is basically just JavaScript, which lets us return this raw HTML to the page. It also lets us use other things like variables in the HTML, so you can see the message which we are printing out in the title is coming from a variable. So we use this react dom dot render method to render a component to the screen. So what we're doing here is we're rendering a component called hello to the screen and it's going to be stored in the div that we've called root. That's why we have one div and its ID is root. So all we're doing in this project is rendering one really simple component to the page. So our hello component is a simple JavaScript class. So if we look at this here, you can see we've created a class called hello and it extends react.component. That is what makes this class a React component and not just a regular class. So in the latest version of JavaScript, we have access to classes and that is what we're using here. So what we do when we create a component is we create a constructor. React lets us store data and we call that data state. So that's what this state variable is. Whenever we initialize the component, we have to initialize the message and we set the timer to zero. So when I refresh the page, you can see we get the default time and the default title. Then when we want to update it, we call our update message function. That resets the time and it updates our title. But you see we're using this.setState. So in order to use that function, we have to bind the this keyword to our method. So that's what this line does. That lets us use the this keyword in our update message function. So you can see in the page, we have a timer that is increasing. So the way we got that to update and to increase on the screen is we have a function called tick. So the tick function just just updates the state by adding one to the number of seconds. And this function looks a bit weird, but it's just a special syntax for writing functions in the new version of JavaScript. So what we have is a function that updates the number of seconds, but we don't have a function to call it. So what we have here is a special built-in function in React called component did mount. And what this means is after the component is drawn to the screen, we're going to run this function, which is going to run once every 1000 milliseconds. And that's really all there is to our component. The final part of our component is the render method. That's another built-in React method. And all we do is we return the HTML that we want the component to display on the screen. So the component can only return a single div. So that's why we just have this blank div containing everything. But within that div, we have our header, we have some text beneath it, and we have a button. This is part of JSX. We use these curly brackets to include variables in our HTML. And what we're doing here is we're also including the variable for the number of seconds that have passed, but we're getting this variable from our state, which is the data we've stored in React. And that's pretty Pretty much all there is to it. If we scroll down, you can see there's nothing left on this page. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Don't forget to check out the new But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.